Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today is the Cable Knit Hat. So it's my first attempt to try to do this hat, and um, I'm pretty excited about it. It's a Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn. The gray version here is one ball, and this one's two, and I think it's just the pom-pom that makes the difference because there's no difference in the instruction of the actual main body itself. So it is Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn. So you are going to need two sizes of knitting needles. So you'll need a six and a half millimeter a ten, uh, or a 10 and a half, US 10 and a half. And it's called for a double point, but I'm gonna be casting on two circulars when I go to do it. And the other size that you're going to need is an eight millimeter size US 11. And those are saying double point needles, which you will need, but I'm also going to transfer over. Once I'm done the brim, I'm gonna transfer this over to the eight millimeter size US 11 when I'm ready. So in today's tutorial, you are going to need some stitch markers that'll help you just keep an eye on the pattern itself so that you can just see where the repeating is going to happen. So I'm going to kick you off with another tutorial that is a different yarn than this and it's on, going to be on circular knitting needles and I want you to choose the six and a half millimeter size US 10 and a half and my circular knitting needles are about 20 inches from start to finish and that will fit that on there. So I need you to cast on a total of 58 stitches and then once you have 58 stitches to your circulars and if you do decide to want to do your double points, just follow the instructions here for that. And then you are going to knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and you'll keep doing that all the way around. And then you need to just repeat that round until you get a total of three inches done, which this here is done. So you're going to just see it's a knit one, purl one, and that's what I need you to do. So I'm going to play that tutorial and then I'm going to bring you back. And once it's three inches done, I'm going to pick up this project and this is where I'm going to kick you off on that. So I'll play that now and I'll be right back. Let's begin making a brim or edging using knit one, purl one. I'm going to demonstrate how to cast on using the twist and transfer method. You're going to start off with just creating a slip knot. We have slower tutorials available here on the knitting crowd in case you want to see specifics like that we're going to then put on. There are many different ways to cast on, so if you choose a different way or there's a suggestion from the pattern, please use that method instead. To do a twist and transfer, you're going to slip your needle into the slip knot that we just created, and it will be directly inside, and you're going to take the yarn and wrap around the back needle. You're gonna come through, pull up, give it a little bit of slack, and then come up from the underside and push on and release. Don't be too tight with this method. It is a, it is a tight ta uh, cast on. So just continue to go around the back needle and do a twist and transfer on. Do the number that I have suggested already at the beginning of the tutorial that this is for. And then for this method, you need a multiple of two. So no matter what this size is, it has to be an even number in order to, for this uh, particular brim to work. Continue to cast on the number you need and maybe back here in just a moment. So I've been loading this and it's an even number. I need you to hear this. I want you to place one extra stitch on here. Okay, so even if the pattern says to do 80, do 81 and I'm going to show you why in just a second. So just do an extra stitch and what we're going to do with that extra stitch is something that um, is going to join the two together instantly. So what I've been learning in knitting is that I've been joining on the first round going around, but then I end up with this gapping space. So what this is going to do is to close that space immediately. Now the goal here is to move this extra stitch that you just created over to this side and you're going to go in what is called this purl wise. So just straight on in and transfer it over to this needle. Keep things nice and tight. And I want you to take the second one in and go up over top of the, the pointer, keeping that where it is. So noticing that I'm holding that down and just kind of maneuvering it and go right up and over, holding that other one in. It takes a bit of practice. And once that's in, you've got it done. And see this gapping space? If you pull the strand that is leading to the ball, It'll pull tight and therefore you'll have a tight join when you go to start. 
So now it will say knit one per one. It could also say per one knit one. It really doesn't matter. As long as you have an even number, it'll work every time. So what you would also want to do is put in a stitch marker so that you know when you've gone all the way around, it just sits on the needle and then you'll transfer that when you pass by each and every time. So starting in the first one, make sure you do pull tight and that will keep that join beautiful. So you're going to knit one and then purl one. So come in between and purl. And then back, knit one and purl one and you're going to do this all the way around until we get back to the stitch marker and meet me there in just a second just to clarify as you are taking off this needle and knitting you're bringing it to the other side so you're constantly pushing down on this needle here and this will push it back around the loop and come back up on the other side so it's a constant revolution with knitting in the round and therefore you can have seamless knitting by doing this concept so it saves you from using the double points immediately but in this kind of knitting you always will have to use your double points at the very end if you're doing a hat in order to give it a close because the wire length doesn't ever change so then you need the double points in order to be able to accomplish that continue around i'll see you at the end of the round so i'm coming all the way around and my last stitch should be a purl stitch if i'm alternating between the two because we started off with the knit stitch to begin so if you started off with a purl stitch and then a knit stitch, then a knit stitch would be your end. So it's whatever um, is the opposite one to where you started. So we're going to pull off. This stitch marker here just lets me know that I've gone all the way around and you can just move it on over. So when you're looking at the work, you can see that there is horizontal strands right here. This meant that I did a purl. This meant that I did a knit stitch. And it helps to identify that. So just in case you think you're going wrong or somebody distracts you, if you look at that, you can tell what stitch went into where. So when you start then the next round, you start immediately then with your knit stitch because that was the starting of the last round. And you see this is a knit and see this, that was a purl. So you're just gonna continually do this. Now, because you've just gone around once completely, pull tight and then you're going to knit stitch and do that one and pull tight again. You can only pull tight for two stitches before it doesn't impact your work. Okay, so then it allows the join. So you're going to use the starting strand here to be able to sew in anything that is left open, if it is open, and then to hide in the ends for that. So, th so this was a purl, so move it back. And so the next one has to be a knit and you're continuing to alternate between the two. So this is where I'm gonna leave you in this section. And if you're following this with a tutorial, just follow to the sides that I'm suggesting. You're going to notice that the ribbing will appear really within the next few rounds and you'll really see it, the stretch happening and it's something that's really neat. Now that I'm here at the three inch mark, I'm ready for the next round, which will do an increase, which will take us from a total of 58 stitches to 70 and we're going to do that in this next round so what i want to do is that i want to do an increase so the repeat is going to be five of the rib stitch and then make one for the rib stitch and then make one what the rib stitch is that you're seeing here is that you have a knit stitch and then you have a purl so whatever it is below you just have to match the same stitch that goes to it but the make one is going to go in between and i'll show you how to do that so just for tutorial reasons, actually, I got to round number 10 all the way there and I accidentally screwed up one of the cables and I don't know how to recover from that. So I'm restarting this whole tutorial process again. So we're going to begin and you're going to just match exactly what you see. So you see it's a knit stitch. So the first five are just going to match. So we knit and purl. So I'm going to count, so this is two, three, four, and five. And then we have to do a make one. So the make one exists on this line right here that is in between. So you're going to take the left needle and you're going to scoop up underneath it and you're going to knit. So make sure that the yarn is in the right position for the knit. Okay, so in this case, it has to be behind. 
So you're going to knit that make one. And then just slide that off. And so now you've just created a new stitch that was in the middle. And now the next four are gonna be the rib stitch. So it's gotta be a purl. So you gotta move the yarn in front first and then purl. The next one out. So that was one, two, three, and four. And then we have a make one to do. So the make one is in the line right here. So scoop underneath the line. Make sure that the yarn is right in behind because you're gonna knit. And you're gonna knit that one. So that was your sequence. So you're gonna start again. So you're gonna do the next five. So the next one starting with a purl. So move the yarn in front and we just count five out. So one, two, three, four, and five. So we're now ending in a purl, but we have to do a make one. So before you start the make one, make sure the yarn is in behind because the make one is gonna be involving a knit stitch and you're looking for the line that is crossing and you're going to scoop it up under this one and you're going to knit. Pull off and then you do the next four. So the next one is a knit stitch. So you're just gonna keep the yarn in behind and knit for, I uh, do the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. And then the next one is a make one. So it's right there, pick it up. So move this yarn in behind first and then knit. So I want you to keep doing the sequence of five rib, uh, five of the rib stitch, make one, four of the rib stitch, make one. And you're gonna do the sequence all the way around and it's gonna leave four stitches at the very end. And we're just gonna finish that with the regular rib stitch when we get there. And I'll see you there in a moment. So I'm coming around and I will have four stitches left after that sequence. And so I'm just gonna maintain that as the regular rib stitching. Okay, so just match what you see below. Please make sure that you have 70 stitches before you move on. And when we move on in the next round, we're going to be changing out our knitting needles to the eight millimeter size US 11. So let's begin to do that process in just a moment. So we're now going to take out this stitch marker here and I'm going to start working on this needle and transferring everything so it'll be capture, uh, captured on here and released off this one. So this is the eight millimeter one. So I'm gonna take you through the sequence and you're gonna repeat the sequence all the way around. This is round number one of the cable panel and there are 12 rounds and uh, there's really quite consistent stuff going on. So we are going to work on this and we are going to do some cable work right off the bat. So you'll need a cable needle as we begin this process. So let's begin this round. We're going to begin the first round and whenever we start a new sequence, we are going to um, um, do the back loop only. And what I'm going to do is after the sequence is done, I'm going to put in a stitch marker here so that I can see where those are and you're going to notice that going around. So what I need you to do is that I need you to go into the back loop only. So normally when we knit, we go like this from underneath, we wanna come in from here and we wanna knit there. And this is going to create some texture that will pop off the front of the hat. So you're going to do it knit in the back loop only. And now here is the sequence. So this is part one. So now this is going to be purl in the next four. So we have one, two,
3. And 4. Now we're going to do what is called as a CR5B. So we're going to grab our cable needle right here. And what this is, is that you are going to slip stitch the next three stitches right onto the cable needle. So just coming straight on in. And if you're using the my type, you can go straight in and just use this and pull off. So do one, two, and three. Now the B represents the back. So the cable, just put it towards the back side here. And what you're going to do then is that you are going to knit the next two that are on the original needle. So make sure the yarn is in behind first to do the knit. And you're going to knit these two. So just ignore that cable needle behind. Okay. And now we're going to use this cable needle. And the first one out from here will be a purl. So move the yarn in front of this needle here and purl the first one that is on the end of the cable here. And then the other two on the cable, it's gonna be a knit stitch, so move the yarn behind and knit those two off individually on their own. And that was a CR 5B. So every time you get to that part, you're gonna do that. Now we're continuing along and we are going to purl the next four. So move the yarn in front and purl the next four in. So we have one, two, keep moving it down this one, three, and four. This is where I want you to put in a stitch marker. So this is the end of a sequence. So 13 of these stitches equals the cable and the first one that you start with is the back loop only. So just put in another color so that you can see where it is and I will continue that around. So you're gonna start that sequence. We use video chapters here. So just scroll back. You can see it in the video description or pinned comment and you're going to scroll back. You'll start with your um, um, knit in the back loop only, you'll purl four, you do the CRB, okay, the CR5B, uh, and then you're going to purl four and then place another stitch marker and continue that sequence around. So just reverse the video if you just need a recap. So I'm coming to the end of the first row and everything is coming off the one needle and been shifting onto the eight millimeter. So the last four are four um, purls. And that's just keeping in the sequence of the order. Okay, so now we've just officially transferred everything off of the smaller needle. So that can be put away now for the rest of this journey. And now we're just going to reset ourselves. And now what I like to do is put a different color so that I know when I've gone all the way around. And so the other sequences are already marked with the stitch markers as I've gone. So now let's move on to uh, round number two. So for the remaining of this tutorial, I'm going to give you the order sequence in a, in a section, and you're just gonna repeat those going around unless I tell you otherwise. So when we go to start, we're just going to start as normal. So the very first stitch that starts each section, unless I tell you otherwise, is always that knit in the back loop only. Okay, so here is your sequence for each one of the sections. So you have the back loop only, Okay, there's no cabling on this round. So, okay, we're going to purl in the next four. Now going to knit two, so move the yarn behind and knit two. We 
We're now going to purl one. Move the yarn back in front and purl one. You're now going to knit two. Move the yarn back to do that. So remember when you knit, you have to come in the, from behind the yarn and when you purl the yarn should be in front. And then the last four of the sequence here is just purl four. So we use video chapters so you can scroll back using the video description. You can see the time marker and it will replay this section as many times as you need. And just keep on doing that and just do this round for uh, round number two when you're at the end of the round or through a, uh, to reset just put your yarn behind transfer your stitch marker and do that around for round number two so let's move on to round number three and here's the sequence to take you through each of the repeats so you're going to start make sure the yarn is in the back and do the back loop only on the first one so knit in the back loop Okay, and now you're going to purl three, so move the yarn in front and purl the three. Okay, so now we're going to do some cabling. So to do this one here, we are just going to do a T3B. So what this means is that you're going to put your cable needle into the first one only and use this to pull it off. And the B means back. So you're just gonna take that one and just toss it in, in the back. And I need you to knit the next two. So put the yarn behind and knit the next two. So when I said behind, you don't wanna go behind this needle. You just wanna go right here. And so you're going to knit the two. And before you get the one that's on the cable, move the yarn in front because it's easier. And you're going to purl the one that's on the cable needle here. So just going in and purl. Okay. So you're gonna take that out. So that was a T3B. The yarn is already in the front and you're gonna purl the next. Leave the yarn in front and you now you're going to do a T3F. So this one here, you have to get the two on here first. So grab the first one and pull it off. Grab the next one and pull it off. And the F means to leave it in front. The yarn is in front and you're gonna purl the next one. Now the two that are on the cable needle, put the yarn in behind and just knit each of those. Just like that. And so this will leave you with three pearls that are left over. So move the yarn in front and purl the last three before the sequence restarts again. And that's what you're gonna do all the way around for this round number three. And so you're just gonna restart after you transfer the, so put the yarn in behind, transfer and restart again. And just use the video chapter to go back to do the sequence again. This is round number three and I'll see you at the end of the round. Okay, let's move on to round number four. There is no cable needle required for this one. So we're gonna start with the very first one. It's always gonna be in the back loop only. And then here we go. So we're gonna start and it'll be purl three. So we have one, two, and three. You're going to knit two, so put the yarn behind. And then purl three, move the yarn in front. You're 
You're going to knit the next two, move the yarn in back. And then you're gonna purl the final three before the sequence begins again. Okay, transfer your, move the yarn back and transfer the stitch marker and start with the back loop only and then that's the same sequence and do that around for number four. Okay, studio door is open so you hear a little bit of ambient noise. So we're now going to begin number five. And so when we go to start this one, we are going to do your first one as the back loop only. So that has not changed. And then we're going to purl the next two. So yarn in front and purl two. Okay, so now we're gonna do a T3B. We've done this before. So grabbing your cable needle, just grab just the one only. And the B means back. So we're just going to leave the needle behind. You were going to knit the next two, so put the yarn behind and knit the next two. Bring the yarn in front and you're going to purl the one that is on the cable needle. Okay, so now we've done that and now we're going to purl the next three. So the yarn is already in front, so purl the next three. Now we're gonna do a T3F. So we're gonna grab the first two that are here. One and two, and F means front, so leave it in front. And you're going to purl the next one, so the yarn is already in front. So just purl the next one. Put the yarn in behind and move this up and you're going to knit the one on the cable. You'll do both of those. Put the yarn in front and you're going to purl the last two before the sequence starts again. So this will be row number five. And so you'll repeat the sequence around. So move the yarn back, transfer over in, in the back loop only and do the sequence again like I showed you. Please do this for number five. I'm now going to give you rounds number six, seven, and eight. They're all the same, all three rounds, and the sequence between each of the stitch markers are the same. So do each of the three rounds. So as you begin, back loop only. So knit the back loop only. There is no cabling involved in these three rounds that are coming. Okay, so now you're going to purl two. And then you're going to knit two, so move the yarn back and knit two. You're now going to purl five. Move the yarn in front and purl the next five. You're going to knit the next two. And now purl the final two before the sequence starts again. So you'll be doing this all the way around with each of the sequences. So move the yarn back, transfer the stitch marker, start with the knit in the back loop only and do what I just showed you. So do this around and then do it again for number seven and eight and I'll pick you up on number nine in just a moment. So hopefully you have your three rounds done 
and the cabling has stabilized and you notice that it has come out and it's staying there. So now what we have to do, we have to get the cables to move back inward. So what we did on the one side to move the cable outward is going to be switching onto this side to move this one in and this one to go in here. So you have to watch that at the beginning of each of the sequences. So let's uh, begin and let's just start. And the first one is always, it's a back loop and knitting in the back loop and we're going to purl two. So move the yarn in front. This is the round that I made the mistake on that I didn't notice for two rounds. <laughs> so we don't want that today. So we're gonna move, we're just gonna keep the yarn in front here. So now before what we were doing is we were just grabbing one and tossing it behind. We're gonna do opposite this time. So we're going to grab the first two and you can see that they're knitted depending on your familiar, uh, depending on how familiar you are with knitting. So you're gonna grab the first two and leave it in the front. And then you're going to purl the next one. Put the yarn in behind and you're going to knit the one off the cable. And you'll do the other one as well. So knit both of them off. Okay, and now we're going to purl the next three. So move the yarn in front. And this is where we're gonna do the other cable. So we're gonna take the first one only. We're gonna grab it and toss it to the back. And we are going to knit the next two. So put the yarn in behind. And then you were going to purl the one off of the cable needle. So put the yarn in front and bring the cable up. You're gonna purl that one off. Okay, this should leave you two before the transition happens. And so you're already in the front with the purl and you're going to purl the next two, which is the ending of the sequence. So you'll transfer again. So move the yarn in behind, transfer, and start with the back loop only and just do what I just showed you and do that around for number nine. It's Labor Day weekend here, so you're gonna hear a lot of motorcycles in the background maybe. So 10th round is the same as number four, so let's begin. Back loop is always to start the first one out in the sequence. And let's continue. And so fourth one, it says we're gonna purl three. So let's purl three. Then it says to knit two. Then purl three. Knit two. and then purl three before the sequence starts again. Okay, move the yarn back, transfer your stitch marker, and we start knit in the back loop only and do what I just showed you and do this around for number 10. Okay, let's do the 11th row. We always start off the back loop only. And then we are going to purl three. Now we're going to do a T3F. So grab the cable needle and grab the next two. 
and the F means to put it in front. So you're gonna grab the, the two and leave the needle in the front and you're going to purl the next one. Move the yarn in back and you're going to knit the two that are on the cable needle. Now you're only gonna purl one, so move the yarn in front, purl one. And then we're gonna do a T3 B, and the B is in the back. So we just grab only one. And leave it to the back. And you're going to knit the next two. So move the yarn in back and knit the next two. And then you're gonna purl the one that's on the, the cable needle. So just move the yarn in front and purl the one that's on the needle. Okay, and now you got three left before the it finishes and you're gonna just purl the next three. This is already in the front, so just purl the three and then that will be the sequence going around. So move the yarn in back, transfer, start again in the back loop only, and do what I just showed you, and do that all the way around for round number 11. So we're now ready for round number 12, which is the same as round number two. So there's no cable work involved in this round. So start each sequence with the back loop only and we are going to purl the next four. So move the yarn in front and purl four. You're then going to purl two, or sorry, you're then going to knit two. So bring in the yarn behind and knit two. You're gonna just purl one, bring the yarn in front. Bring the yarn in back and knit the next two. And then you're gonna purl the final four before the sequence starts all over again. Sorry about the dog. Dog owners, you know where I'm coming from, right? They find a reason to bark. Okay, so once the sequence is done, move the yarn back, transfer, start with the back loop only and what I just showed you, and this will be round number 12. We're now going to shape the top, and now we have to start transferring to our double points. So you need a total set of five of these, and they're normally sold in a set of five. You'll need the eight millimeter US 11. So the strategy is for me is that if you look at the pattern, you'll notice is that there's five repeats. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we need four needles to be active and then the, the fifth needle is the one we're going to knit with. So what I'm going to do for myself is that I like to keep this in sequence of keeping the reduction um, perfectly on the, the knitting needles itself. So when, when I'm starting here, I'm going to apply then a stitch marker and I'm going to apply a stitch marker right here and this is just going to hold so I'm going to be able to count my number of rounds so whenever I see this I'm just going to loop the piece of yarn through and I'm going to know that I've gone all the way around so when you start with the double points these stitch markers tend to fall off the ends so my goal is is that the first one and two section I'm going to keep on the same needle and then this one I'm going to keep separate separate and separate so that gives me the number four so as we begin, I can take this off now that I've just marked which one is the beginning and I'll see that and we're going to start now officially the top of going in of the first round. So let's begin and let's take our time and do this. So using one of the double points, I'm going to start and I'm going to go in the back loop only. 
So as we begin, just ship this one here. So as we begin, we're going to be essentially taking everything off of this circular. So do your back loop only. And keep your yarn organized. Okay, and now we're going to do a purl two together. So normally when we purl, we go in the front like we have been, and we've just been going into one, we need to now go into two. So we're gonna grab two at the same time and then purl. And pull off. We're then going to purl the next two. So just going into the next one and purl as normal. And do the next one here. We're now going to do a CR5B like we did before. So what we need to do is get that cable needle back up and a CR5B uh, is that we are going to grab the next three in a row and put it onto the needle. So we have one, two, and three, and the B means to put it into the back. So we're gonna put it right behind and we are going to start with the next one and we're going to knit the next two. So put the yarn in behind the double point and knit the next two. Now we're gonna go back to that cable needle and we're gonna start with the first one and the first one has to be a purl. Okay, so put the yarn in front and we're going to purl the first one. I know there's a lot going on on the screen here. There's a lot going on in my hands. So we're just gonna purl the first one and then we're going to knit the next two. Okay, so now we're just gonna put that down. And so we are now going to purl the next two that you have. So put the yarn back in front. Sorry, the noise is happening. So we'll purl these next two. And then we're going to purl the last two in the sequence together as one. So go in the next one and the one after that. And just do that. Now, because the first two sections I want on the same needle, I'm going to keep this going. So I'm gonna just keep my stitch marker going on this one. And it, I'm only gonna use it on this one so I can see the two sets. And I'm gonna keep on going. And it's the same sequence that I just showed you. So I'll take you through again. So we're going to go in the back loop only. And then we're gonna purl the next two together. So bring the yarn back in front and put the two into the same stitch. And then we're going to purl the next two. So one and two. Make sure when you push it down, you don't push it off the end of the double point. We're gonna do a CR5B. So you're gonna grab the next three. So one, two, and three. And we're gonna leave it in the back. And we're going to knit the next two. So put the yarn in behind just the double point only and knit the next two. the yarn in front and we're going to purl the first one off of the cable needle and then we're going to knit the next two so yarn in behind and knit the next two We're now going to purl the next two. And 
and then the last one in the sequence, and you can tell by the stitch marker, is going to purl two together. So put them both into the same stitch. So this is sections one and two onto the same needle, and I can see that this is a new section, so I'm just gonna put this into the middle, and I'm going to grab a new stitch marker, and because this is gonna naturally fall off, just the next section by itself is going to be the sequence that I just showed you. So starting with a new needle, you're going to go into the back loop only, of the very first one. And it's awkward when you start this for the first time, so you're gonna go behind the needle you're working with. And it's easier if you just put this needle in front. It'll be out of your way in just a moment. So you're now going to purl the next two together. So bring the yarn in front. Just keep shifting, so purl those together. And then you're going to purl the next two. So this needle here is just gonna get further and further away from your work. So it'll be out of your way just shortly. Now you're going to do the CR5B. So you're gonna grab the next three. So one, two, and three, and leave it behind. And you're going to knit the next two. And then from the cable needle, the first one off is gonna be a purl. So put the yarn in front and purl the first one off. And then you'll knit the next two. So that cable's done. And so you're going to purl the next two in a row. And then the last two of the sequence, you are going to purl the two together. And then that's it for this needle. So it's only the first section that will share two, the first needle that will share two, two sections. Put your yarn in behind to get ready. You can take your stitch marker off and you'll do the next two sections that you have left, one and two, and you'll finish that around. And so everything will be on four needles by the time you get around. So please do this and I'll be right back in a moment. So now that you can see the four points are in place, the fifth one is in my hand, and as I knit, the one will become empty and I will switch on over. So each one of them is a, sec a section of the decrease. So we have the one, two, three, four, and five. So as I give you the sequence, you just gotta make sure that you do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you the sequence. I'll, I'll do it the second time by myself. And then when I, I'll show you how to jump over uh, these double points when you go to do that as well. So let's begin round number two. So using a new fresh one, you are going to start in the back loop only. So as you begin to start this, you gotta make sure that the first one jumping will be coming over and you're just gonna pull it a little bit tighter than you normally would. And again, if you just move this one in front, it'll just get further and out of your way. So as you do this one here, you're going to purl the next three. So bring the yarn in front and purl the next three. There is no cabling on this round. So we have one, two, and three. And then you're gonna knit the next two. So bring the yarn behind. You're going to purl one, knit the next two, and 
then purl the three, and that takes you to the end of the sequence that you can see. Stitch markers are so handy. So what I want you to do is repeat that same instruction, and I will show you what's gonna happen when you jump the needles. And we already know when we've gone all the way around because we've marked it. And I will show you when we jo jump from this one to a new needle and what happens. Just one thing before you go, just make sure that you do transfer and keep that so you can see it and then start your sequence. So the back loop only and etc. I'll see you when the jump happens in a moment. So I'm finishing up the needle that is in my left hand here. And that is the original needle and it's emptying out. So this will become the new needle that I will be knitting with in the next sequence. Okay, so we push this one halfway, let it rest. We transfer this back to this hand and we continue around with what we already know with the back loop only and etc. So just make sure that when you do the jumps that you are tight so that you don't create a gap space and just shift this needle so it's in front to keep it out of your hair. Okay, so do the sequence around and this is round number two. So going forward, I'm gonna give you the sections like we did at the very beginning. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so make sure you do that. So the two sections are sharing one needle. So let's begin and here we go, using the fifth needle. We are going to go into the back loop only. We are going to be using the cable needle on this one. And then we are going to purl the next two. So get the yarn in front and purl the next two. And now it says that we are going to do a T3B. And if you recall what this is, just with the knitting needle, or sorry, with the cable needle going into one, toss it to the back and you were going to knit the next two. So put the yarn in behind and knit the next two. And now you're gonna purl the one that is on the needle. So bring this back and purl the one that is on the cable. You're now going to purl the next one. The yarn is already in front. Now you're going to do a T3F. So grabbing just the next two. Okay, and leave it in the front. The yarn is going is already in the front, so we want to purl the next one. And these two we want to knit. So put the yarn behind and knit the two on the cable. This should leave two before the end of the sequence and it could be the end of each needle as well. So, and those are gonna be just a pearl each. So I need you to do that around for each of the sections and maybe at the end of this round, and this is round number three. And if this is your first needle, just make sure you just transfer and begin again and keep it on the same needle until this is done. Okay, round number four. We're going to start, and I'll just tell you the sequence. It's in the back loop only. There is no cabling on this one, and there's no reduction either. So back loop only. And then we have um, purl two to bring the yarn in front. And purl the next two. Okay, now you're gonna knit two. And now you're gonna purl three. Now you're gonna knit two. And then you're gonna purl the last two before the sequence starts all over again. So I need you to do this all the way around. And this is round number 
for. I'll be right back in a moment. So we're gonna continue along now on the fifth round. So we're gonna do a pearl three together. So we're going to do some fun stuff right in the center of each one of the, the five sections. So We're now going to begin number six, seven, and eight. All three rounds are the same. And if you recall, this is the same as it was in the main body. So as you begin, you are going to do the back loop only. Okay, get that needle out of your face. And then you're going to purl the next one. And then you're going to knit the next two. And now you're going to purl three. the next two and then the last one before the sequence finishes is just a purl one so just purl on its own so you're going to uh, continue the sequence going around and then once you're all the way around you're going to do the same for seven and eight and then i'll be back at the end of number nine in a moment so let's begin the ninth round as always we're going to start off in the back loop only we are going to be doing cabling on this round as well. Okay, so we did the first one, the back loop only, and now we're gonna purl one, so bring the yarn in front. It took me quite a bit of time to get used to um, doing uh, double points, so if I'm making it look awkward, um, it's not intentional, it just it takes a bit of practice. So, okay, so pearl one, and then we're gonna do a T3F. And if you recall what that is, is that we are going to take the first two, and we're gonna leave it in the front, and we are going to pearl the next one. So we're already in the front here, so we're just gonna pearl. And then we're gonna put the yarn behind and knit off the two on the cable. We're going to purl the next one. So bring the yarn in front and purl. And now we're gonna do a T3B. So this one, take only just the one, toss it to the back and you're going to knit the next two. So put the yarn in behind and knit the next two. Now you're going to purl off the one that is on the cable. And then the last one in the sequence is just purl one. Okay, so that's going to be your sequence going around here on the ninth round. And please do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of number nine. Okay, let's bring on the 10th round. So we're gonna start really redu reducing because we only have a couple more rounds to go. So 10, 11, and 12. So number t uh, 10 here, we're going to go in the back loop only on the first one out of each of the sequence. And then we are going to do purl two together. So put the yarn in front and put the next two together.
<laughs> my needles are acting up. So put all two together. And then we're going to knit the next two. So put the yarn back in behind. And now we're gonna purl one. Knit the next two. And then the last two before the sequence starts again is put, put the yarn up front and purl two together. So please do this all the way around for this round number 10 and I'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, round number 11, here's the sequence. Knit the front loop only. Okay, and then we have a purl one. So let's bring the yarn in front. And it says we're gonna knit the next two together. So put the yarn behind and put the next two together. So we haven't done that yet. So the next two, so instead of just knitting the one, you're gonna grab both and put it together as a knit together. You're gonna purl the next one. Knit two together, so put the yarn behind. Okay, and then you're going to purl the last one of the sequence. And you're gonna do that around for number 11. And I'll be right back in a moment. Let's do our very last round. We're gonna remove the stitch marker as we go because it is the last one. So we're going to start with the, yes, you guessed it, uh, knitting in the back loop only. And then we're going to purl one. So we're gonna bring the yarn in front and purl one. And then we're gonna put the yarn behind and we're going to knit the next three together. Okay, so one, two, three. So you have to go all the way over here one, and start capturing it. It might be a little tight. Okay, get all three like that and then you're going to purl the next one and that's your sequence going all the way around and as I mentioned you can remove off your stitch marker and just continue to go around and this will be the 12th round the final so let's finish off the hat you don't have a lot left over but you need to create a long tail and you need to use a tapestry needle now to collect these remaining off of the uh, the four needles that are here so this is where I finished. So I'm going to start here and move it on up and I'm just gonna start collecting. And I'm not gonna pull the final string until all of it is off, but I can make it taut. Okay, so I can just get it to come there, but I don't wanna do a good pull until the end. Okay, so just keep uh, going around and as you start releasing them off, as they get onto the strand, you can just shift them off and keep on going. And so you are essentially releasing the needles from the work. Okay, so please go all the way around. And as you complete each needle, just keep sliding it out so that there's no needles that are left. Okay, so all of these are collected, so out and keep doing that around. So I'm going through the final one here and that's it, done. So now I'm going to use this and I'm going to pull the top shut. So just carefully but firmly pull everything closed. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go directly across and going on over and back. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. So it's like a cross formation. And then back down through the center. And when I go through the center, I'm going to put my hand carefully in behind and just make sure that it doesn't capture onto anything and comes out through the bottom. 
give it another good tug, and then secure it with a tie on this side. So you have to decide whether you're going to do a pom-pom. You'll need a second ball if you would like to make a handmade one, or you can do like I'm about to do. I'm gonna put a pre-made um, pom-pom on it. You can find those online if you're looking for that. I love pom-poms, I think they're quite fun. And I grew up with them, so it just has a bit of nostalgia for me. So now we have a couple more things to do. So this one here, this is on the inside of the hat. So I wanna make sure that we carry this starting strand to the inside. Okay, so turning it to the inside and just carefully gliding it up. Don't allow this to peek through to the front. So don't allow that needle to go so deep that you can see it on the front side and you're just gonna pull it up across. There's already a slip knot in position, so it will not slide out on you. So this here is just taking care of the loose ends and just take it somewhat back, but not all the way back down to the bottom. And then that's where you're gonna safely cut it. Now I had another stitch marker in position so I could see when I was going around. So you're now gonna take that out and let's go and get ourselves a, a pre-made pom-pom to put on the top if you'd like to do that next. The pom-poms that I got from Amazon have a loop at the bottom. I'm not sure, if I can't remember if those tell you that they have that, but I wanna give it a shake uh, before I'm gonna apply it on. And what I want to do is grab that tapestry needle once again. If you don't have a loop, then what you need to do is just grab your tapestry needle and just feed it through the ball and just make sure you capture on some of the material that the ball is made of. But if you have this thing, you just wanna go through. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go through the top and I'm just gonna go on the one side of the middle and again, putting my hand in behind and I'm just gonna drag a portion of that strand through and then I'm gonna release it on this side. I'm then going to feed the other side into the tapestry needle and people in craft shows, they get all frantic and they say they don't like pom-poms and then you lose a sale. So if you apply pom-poms with um, a, a tie, a bow tie, if somebody gives that excuse, you can just say, hey, by the way, it's removable. And if they wanna wash the hat, they can do so. So you're gonna pull the second strand through and then release it. So don't pull it all the way through because you have to have it attach. So I'm gonna pull both strands. Now, so it's sitting right on the top. And then on the inside of this hat, I want to tie this into a bow tie. So if somebody says, oh, they, they wish you wouldn't have done the bow tie when you said it comes off and then they still decline, then you know the bow tie was never the issue, right? So then tie it in a bow tie, snip it and snip it. And therefore that's an option just in case they like it. And therefore you can enjoy your hat. And this is a great little hat and it's knitting. And this really truly is my only second hat that I've ever done in cabling. And I'm really quite happy with it. That's it for now. We hope you've enjoyed.